Hello and welcome to another edition of BOI Weekly. I'm Kaede Alayande. Global records for family businesses suggest that 67% of them fail to succeed into the second generation. A further 90% failed by the third generation. But today on BOI Weekly, we visit a large enterprise which is being successfully run by a second generation of executive management, something that's hard to find around here. Taking over from his father, George Onofoko, now runs Coleman Technical Industries, the largest wires and cables business in sub-Saharan Africa, alongside his brother. Over the last 30 years, the company has grown from a small trading business into providing a wide spectrum of cables for telecoms, electricity and broadcasting, just to mention a few. This is the success story of a business with a long-standing history of partnership and support from the Bank of Industry. Stay close. In the agricultural sector, due to limited processing and preservation capacity, this results in high food prices and food importation with its attendant effects on the nation's foreign reserves. To enable Nigerians to optimize the benefits from the country's vast agricultural products such as cassava, oil palm, rice, tomatoes, and others. The Bank of Industry has launched a 5 billion naira cottage agro-processing fund, the CAP Fund. Customers can access the fund to establish plants to process our various agro-produce into food products or intermediate raw materials for industries at a single-digit interest rate of 9% per annum. For more information on the CAP Fund, please visit www.boinigeria.com slash CAP Fund. Bank of Industry, developing Nigeria's agro-processing industry through the CAP Fund. I met with the MD CEO, Mr. George Onofoko, at their factory in Arikpo along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. He shows me around their new factory complex, fully funded by the Bank of Industry. This is for house wiring. House wiring cables is sold in rows of 100 meters as standard. Not 97, not 99. Not in yards. Not in yards. It's sold as 100 meters. So when you buy cable, you actually sell at 100 meters. So here that we're doing the seven wire stranding uh, of 4 mm wire, uh, we purely supply 4 mm and 6 mm and above as stranded conductors. Now, because of the increased capacity and because of this old factory that haven't been financed and supported by BOI, it's giving us increased capacity. Before, we could only do a certain number a day, which uh, by our capacity before we could do for 4MM, for instance, stranded, 500. Today, we can do 4,000 to 5,000 coins of just 4MM stranded in one day because of the capacity that has been inbuilt now. The full machinery in here is supported by Bank of it. Uh, the building was uh, our own investment share of uh, the total investment. So we catered for the land and building and construction aspect of it in support with one or two other commercial banks. Uh, Bank of Industries' focus is to enable you do the job as long as you've got the environment for it, which is to actually provide the cost and funds of the machinery. And it meant we were able to afford the state-of-the-art machinery, the capacity. If you look at this factory, this factory today can produce over a thousand tons of copper cables in a month, which is exceptional for the size of the factory because it's a technology field factory. You have machines from Europe, machines from China, but these are top-end machinery, which allows you in such a size of a factory to actually deliver uh, such a volume of product, uh, products in a day. And when you look at it, this, this is over a two and a half billion naira project. 
and with a support of 1.5 billion alone from from uh, Bank of Industry, and that just tells you that the focus is the long-term solution to every area in Nigeria, and I think we have to give kudos to them on that. After a few minutes of pacing around the factory floor, he leads me to his office where we continue the conversation. I'd like to know about your production ecosystem, your spread and your output generally. Today we produce, the, we have the largest range of cable products uh, in the region. Uh, we produce for the house wiring, uh, your house uh, wires, we also produce for the telecom industry, uh, which is uh, coaxial cable. We also produce uh, network. We're the only producers of coaxial cable in West Africa, which is your TV video cable. We're the only producers also for the telecom industry of Cat5, Cat6 uh, uh, cables for the network cable. We're also producing hybrid cables for the same industry when it comes to their power use because they use hybrid power. We, use, we produce the cables, the DC cables that they use for your battery and solar connections. And then we also produce for the power industry, which is your distribution cable, your transmission cable for the old network. Uh, and at the same time, we also produce for the, we're the only producers of medium to high voltage cables, which is uh, 11 kV, or 11,000 volts uh, insulated cables or 33,000 volts uh, insulated cable or even higher. Now that is produced locally. That's actually we're one of the only few countries in the continent even producing that uh, in Nigeria. So w for a range of cable, I I'll say even for the oil and gas, we also do do specialized cables for the oil and gas, which are marine-based insulated cables, which allow you to actually put it on the water. Uh, and you have oil resistant, fire resistant. In terms of range, we, we've gone into every facet of life you can even imagine and areas where it becomes even more specialized, we are one of the few that you actually can come to in specialized, customized cables. So for Coleman, we become a one-stop shop. And that's the whole point, is to actually, rather than drive business from being importers of materials or finished cable, we've driven the company to be a total solution for the country. So what exactly would you say prepared you for the succession? We were a bit lucky. Uh, in, in terms of when you look at the Patriot, the chairman, he actually, um, when you look back at it, for those of us that are second generation, myself and even my ED, who's my brother that works here, we were indirectly prepared for uh, running businesses. Uh, I could remember as far back as we were young, younger than in those days where you finished secondary school and you had your long-term breaks and part of the long-term break was to do a month with him in one job or the other in his business and never in a senior post it was very and i we used to and what he used to say to everybody then is you need to learn to be a follower before you become a leader so you cannot even as young as you are, enter my business and expect to be on the top when you've not learned how to follow other people. So you always got the low end junior jobs and you were tasked to do a lot of work. I think for me, I, I think that's also prepared you into the type of courses you wanted to do invariably because he had businesses in all sorts, in all areas, all in major areas from manufacturing to trading. And so for those, depending on what, and it gave you the option of whichever junior area you wanted to pick from the factory to the office work. And 
you, we've tried different areas. I think that's what propelled me into wanting to do accounting and finance because I ended up enjoying working with the accounting team than I worked in any other department. How do you determine what to produce? I, I think first you have to also understand what your local dynamics or local market is. Uh, what does your market need? Uh, for Coleman, what we produce is first a solution for the Nigerian market. Now, the biggest solution we first saw was a weak point, was the, even the simple things like your housewire market, which is what you use, your simple cables in your house, your termination cables for your socket, your switches. Now, we saw that there was a big weak point in that. It's not that we couldn't produce it, but nobody was actually producing it fast enough and at the right volume. And I think for us, first, we needed to make sure that each market segment we picked, we can satisfy that market. So we then looked at the elsewhere market. We moved from just doing the simple single cables to the flexible cables, later on, which you use for your pumps, your water heater. Then later, we looked at the coaxial cable. Now, in determining market penetration or market uh, product range mix, you have to look at what your market is willing to take and what the competition is actually. Uh, and in those cases, in some cases, the competition is not even local, it's the import. So we, we try to balance how competitive we can make that cable locally and make it available. 